story. I don't just tell stories. I've sometimes been known to fight. It's true. Um, archery is also one of my, my joys, and on occasion, I have taken a bow to the field, and uh, this is one of the tales I brought back from the Penzi War. And finally, set pen to par parchment <coughs> in honor of this challenge. <coughs> When the Pensic penance flew five years past, didst our swords prepare to defend the castle there? You all know it well. And this is the tale of a crossbowman following orders. Our crown spoke to us that day, not of victory, for our foemen were limitless in their numbers, but rather of buying our forces' times. Our arrows were to harry and distract the foe, to slow them and to divert. These words I took to heart and thought upon my office so mounted I the tall tower by the gate and peered down betwixt the creels. Now, tis true that God had blessed me with a passing steady hand, but the theater had made of me a voice that, I'm told, can rattle windows. And as it happens... <coughs> Technology. <laughs> And as it happens, reach across a riotous battlefield. So as one shot found a home within their ranks, it came to me to boast volubly about my lonely kill, whilst my quarrow bloodied only one tunic, my capering vexed more. <laughs> <laughs> this play continued, and shortly an arrow assailed my roost, and I did thank them for their patronage. A foeman beseeched me, for my quarrel, in fact, and I did gift it instead to the officer standing behind him, boisterously apologizing for the quality of my aim. More arrows came. <laughs> Leafly, I did compare their father's stench to elderberries, and more helms turned <laughs> to essay this spectacle. Perhaps amused, a coronet called their ballistae to silence me. <laughs> Great spears meant for our barricades fell instead on my stony perch, and I fell to my knees in gladness not to mention staunchest cover. <laughs> I realized that my quarrels were few, but my truer barbs were limitless. I followed my stories at the foe, and they were similar in the main. The tale they told was, look at me. I ruminated on the unlikelihood of their parents' legal union. I proclaimed <laughs> my invulnerability. I shot my critics, a rare joy for any troubadour. <laughs> In time, I sat on so many arrows, I could see farther than I could before. And what I saw then was this, the Eastern Army's mighty trebuchet subtly turning. <laughs> I, I, and this is true, great stones given flight shook the tower beneath me, but they did not but improve upon my already soaring spirit. I taunted them a second time. <laughs> I displayed for them my hind parts. I hid well down whilst my redoubt shook anew with eastern ire. The walls bristled with feathers. Despite this barrage, disproportionate as it was for my meager rank, lo, my voice was yet unsilenced. But I must relate honestly that my jesting eventually earned its due. Enterprising boots did steal to the foundation of my redoubt, and mischief was afoot. In truth, I will not advise against heeding an enemy's cries of exhortation to peer over the creels in such a circumstance. <laughs> For to demure would deny what a rare sight indeed as I glanced down, my very last quarrel laid in its cradle. I did behold a small tower made of men below me, and mounted upon it a pair of sharp eyes with a spear. Yes, this worthy ended my performance as his spear point laid open my brow, but as I fell, I drew solace. I knew that the great cheer that went up from a hundred mouths was not solely to his credit, as applause rewards all who play, no matter their role. And that, dear friends, is the tale of a crossbowman following orders. <laughs>